and let's get started. So today is our bot training day. We are super excited because guys, I've been sharing the bot with some very key influential people uh, this week, people that are literally master distributors in their companies, hearing terms like game changer and wow. And so that's uh, very exciting actually. Well, John's chewing. So I'll wait till John's finished chewing because I had one call with John this morning. Maybe you could share your feedback or if you stop chewing, if you want to share what what you heard and saw and why you'll have to unmute yourself though yeah the call this morning was fantastic um the um uh gentleman we had on is a very um uh, very strong leader in many different companies over the years and um he was very excited about what we had said that he thought our system was more robust than he's ever seen and um, uh, could do a lot for him and his uh, team for sure. So we're excited that um, we're going to be meeting with him again in the very near future and um, be able to launch this to um, probably the entire company or multiple companies that he's involved with actually. Yeah, what what I heard him say, thank you, John, was thank you for setting it up, is that he has been the number one distributor in the last three companies he's been involved with. Um, and as you said, he's got several different companies. He said, yeah, this definitely looks like something I want to get all my leaders in front of. And we and scheduled a call right away for next Saturday morning uh, at 12 Eastern time. That's nine my, my time, Pacific Standard time, because he said Saturdays are the days we're going to get more people on the call. So right off the bat, he saw enough to say, like, as John said, this is uh, way more powerful than anything you've seen before. And this is something he wants to put in front of everybody and schedule the call right away. So that was really exciting. I also see, who else did I see? I saw Maurice there. Maurice, welcome to the call. I don't want to leave anybody out. And Rodney, Rodney Appleton, I just uh, followed up on a call for Rodney with a gentleman by the name of Joe Reed. I can mention his name. I'm sure he's been a top producer in many companies over the years. He signed up, bought the Lifetime Bot about two hours ago. So uh, very excited. And Jennifer, welcome to the call. Jennifer, I just noticed you there. So glad you're with us. So um, what we wanted to do today was make sure that you know how to use it, even though the majority of the people are going to just use the point click version with the free bot system. So we, we are still scheduled to go live on Monday for our pre-launch with the free bot system. I got the video script from the uh, voice narrator that's at the very top of the support site. It had one minor little glitch in it. And he said he had to redo the whole thing. So we're going to get that tomorrow, but we'll have it. We uh, edited it with uh, music and some vi little video clips. So we're good to go. We just need the final video from him. So we're super, super excited. So, but I wanted to get Scott on to share how, um, so let me share my screen here. Oops. So Scott, um, Scott did a training this morning with, John that he recorded he didn't get a chance to finalize the editing of it because he is using some new editing software but want to show you how to actually create a conversation in the automated messenger bot so I see that we only have 300 licenses of that that we've set aside for the launch okay and uh, so I, I see that as something really just for the key leaders for people that they're going to want to, you know, not pay the monthly fee of having a lot of contacts. They know they'll have a lot of contacts, but in addition to that, um, they'll want to be able to have the flexibility to create a conversation that then we can put into the free bot system for everybody in their company. So Scott, you want to share your screen? Are you ready to go? Okay. Scott is our, lead developer behind the bot platform over there in Colombia. I don't know if those beaches are really there in Colombia, but looks good. 
There are beaches in Colombia. I'm not on the beach. I'm up in the mountains. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let me share my screen. Do -do. And there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to make a small assumption that uh, I'll clarify, and that is that you've already set up your bot and gotten into the bot dashboard. If you haven't, that's another training. Those videos are already in the training library, and we can cover that individually if you have any questions on that. But what we're going to talk about tonight is how to create a flow, get you kind of started in uh, getting your feet wet so that you can get some questions. Typically, you know, if you don't even know where to begin, you don't have any questions because you don't know what you don't know. So I'm going to get you started and then I'm sure you have all kinds of questions. <laughs> so basically in the bot sure. dashboard, once you have logged into your bot dashboard, you can get to there from your dashboard link inside your KWA platform or directly from your, uh, your URL. You can type in the link that's that we've given before. But basically, when you log in, you will start at the analytics tab. This is where you will start. You'll see a page that looks like this when you log in. All right. So we're going to talk about creating a new flow. So you go to the flow section of your bot. And then I have a, just a temporary folder here that I'm working in. When you want to create a new flow, you tip, you click on the add flow button. That will allow you to create a new flow. We've got my first conversation flow is what I created earlier this afternoon with John. So I'm just going to jump over to it. But that's what you do. You, you create a new flow. You type in a name. You hit continue. It'll take you to a blank dashboard. Uh, I'm going to basically recreate what I did this afternoon, but so there will be nothing in the uh, dashboard except for one single send message button like this. That's all you'll see is a, a single send message button. And to make edits and begin creating this conversation that I have here, you click on the send message button and then the editor window will pop up here on the right hand side. OK, so this actually kind of works because you'll see like the finished picture of the puzzle and then we'll step through one step at a time of, of what we are creating. So we're creating a send message. We're going to type in a little text. Um, so a, a little background, Facebook requires that you have that your visitor interact with your bot before you can get any information about your visitor. So I like to start my conversations with a question. Um, Facebook by default has a, you know, how can I help you kind of message and get started. But you can put any question you want and bypass that get started. So that's what I typically do. If you're going to send a link to someone in a Facebook post or in an Instagram post or by email, uh, you can send them a link directly to a specific flow. And rather than the get started button, you can ask them a question and they can click on that button there instead of get started. So that's a, a, a little, uh, a nice little change there. So send message. We're going to start a new flow with a message. We want to add, in this Scott, case, a yes. Um, question? Just really quick for, for those that may not know if the, um, if the, um, panel that you bring up when they click on that may be hidden behind our pictures. They can actually minimize that. So you may want, if in case somebody doesn't know that on Zoom, if you click on the little um, uh, the little minus button on the far left side of the pictures, it will minimize that down to just a little bar so you can see everything behind it. Just so everybody knows that. I'm not sure if everyone else understood what you said. I'm not following what you're talking about. Yeah. Can you clarify that again, please? On, on this page that we're looking at, John, or something else? Well, what I'm talking about is, you know, like when, when we're seeing all the different images of the people off to the side, if everybody in a Zoom see, meeting? Yeah, in a Zoom meeting. Yeah, in yeah, a yeah. Zoom meeting. Okay, that's different. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So 
in case people are watching this right now and they're they're not seeing everything on your screen some stuff is hidden that's all i'm saying you know so that everybody knows that yeah you can hide your thumbnail videos on the interaction the video section so if, rather than watching the participants you can shrink that down and, and see the whole screen it depends on what what mode you're in all right so back to the building a bot so we're we click on this empty send message button and we are going to add content so you click on the add content and we're going to greet the visitor so we pick text and up here we said would you like to know you know if you can type any text you want you say uh so i said would you like to know and ask him a question something right over here i i said would you like to know how i use chatbots to make money on autopilot right so you type the question and then you add a button. In this case, I added the first button. You can label the button anything you want that will get the person to interact with your bot. So I say, sure, or anything you wanna label the button as, right? And save it. So now you see here I've, I've got, I sure would, or just sure. Add another button. And we're gonna say, nah, you click on the button label and you can change the text, okay? So that's how you create the first slide here, this card that has your question and a Scott, couple of buttons. Can, Scott, can you zoom in so we can see that a little better, please? Like your At first least. card? Yeah. So you can zoom in with this button down bottom here. Zoom or in. Just click the plus sign. Right, click the plus, not the plus sign, the magnifying plus. Oh. This this plus sign is add items to the oh, all right. To, to the desktop. So okay. I'll show you. I click on the plus sign. Okay. And you can add a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Let's not do this. This is the plus right. sign for zoom in. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so now we've got this card that we created, this first card, right? So if they say sure then you can drag into an empty space and it will it'll just create a new message for you. So you don't have to each time say add a new message, it will automatically add a new message. The same thing over here. Oh, when you add a new message, it automatically opens to the add content window. But if you just click anywhere in the desktop, it will close that edit window. So I'm just gonna click over here to show you, click off of it, the edit window closes, right? Now also if they click nope, so if you hover over this button here and click and then drag and then let go in a gray area, it'll create a new message. So now we have a message if they say yes and a message if they say no, right? So I'm gonna pull this up here. What I did above is I just created a animated GIF as a response to their message. So we're gonna edit <clears throat> if they say sure, yes, add content, we're gonna add an animated GIF. We are connected directly with the Jiffy. You click on this item and you can search Jiffy's database directly. You say, yes, right? Say, yes, yes, yes. So we pick a, any, any kind of animated GIF that's fun, right? So if, he's, if they say, sure, then Joey's gonna say, yes. And if they say, no, I don't want to, then we're gonna add another GIF. And let's let's tie, let's like uh, why not, right? Why not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it doesn't uh, really matter what you select. The goal of this initial message is to get your customer to click a button. So the more intriguing you make the question, you know, hey, you want to know the secret to how, you know, I generate, you know, full-time income with part-time effort or something, right? You, you intrigue them, get them to click a button. Once they click a button, give them some visual feedback that you heard them. And then once, uh, once they have clicked a button, Facebook will give you some information about them. Facebook will give you a uh, their Facebook name, their Facebook 
profile picture, uh, and then allow you to access their email address and phone number that Facebook has. You can't see it yet. You have to get permission for Facebook to give it to you, but that's what we're going to do next. We're going to ask a question and I'm going to come back and put these tags in a moment. So we're going to ask a question. Hey, can I get your email address? And can I get your phone number? Right? So once they respond either yes or no, we don't really care how they responded. Yes or no. We're going to ask them a question. We're going to say uh, email. So in order to get information from the user, specific information that Facebook will provide, we click on add content and say, get user data. So we're getting this user data from Facebook and essentially asking uh, the user's permission for Facebook to give it to us. So we say like this, so you, can I get your email address? Right. So Facebook will provide it in a button and we'll walk through this conversation and I'll show you. But when you type in the message, it will enter their answer, either the button they click with the Facebook provided email address, or if they type in a new email address, you click this button, it will populate their reply into a custom field called email or whatever you select. So you can choose different reply types and we'll do phone next, but you can say, hey, I wanna collect an email address and I want to make sure it's an actual email format. So the bot platform will automatically check the format. And if it's not a valid email format, it'll give them an error message, right? We wanna save their reply into a variable or custom field called email, which is a system default field that already exists. And then there is the option that you can provide to allow people to click on a skip and not give you an email address. Or if you delete the skip, the word skip, it will not give them the option to skip. So if you're giving away something of value and the requirement for them is to give you an email address, then you could just say, well, I'm not gonna give you the option to skip because I'm not gonna give you my freebie if you don't give me your email address. Right. So now what we have here is we have a card that asks for some information. It asks for an email address. We're going to do the same thing with the phone. Right here, we're going to ask for the user's phone. So once we've gotten the data and it's saved it in the email field, the conversation will continue to the next card. We're going to add content, get user data again. And this time, the question will be in your phone. Right. So I'm going to ask them for their phone number. I'm making these all real short so we don't spend a lot of time typing. It defaults to asking for an email type. So you need to come in to the click to edit, change the reply type to a phone type, and save it into the phone field. That when you pick a type, it def defaults to the appropriate field. If it doesn't look like a number, again, they'll get a, an error message. They type in an alphabetical, you know, 1-800 phone me. Okay, it'll say that doesn't look like a valid phone number. <laughs> so, um, and again, we can, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when you do leave a skip button. Say, say we, re we require their email address, but not their phone number. We're going to let them skip the phone number. And if they just sit there on the field where it's asking for a phone number, you can let it automatically skip and continue with the conversation if they don't provide you with the skip phone number after a certain amount of time. So you can pick minutes or seconds or hours. Minutes or seconds is probably most appropriate. So you can say if they haven't entered a, a phone number after five minutes, you're just going to assume they're not going to give you a phone number, continue on with the conversation. All right. So this is the difference. One has a skip button. The other one doesn't have a skip button. And then once they have given you some information, being a KWA member for the most of you, you will want to add one additional field. You want to save that data into your KWA contact manager, right? So we have a flow that we will be providing you that allows you to send contacts into KWA. So basically all you do is you say, once you get the data, you don't want to continue before you get the data, once you get the data, 
You're going to have a new step, select add content. And this time we're going to do an action. The action is going to be start a new flow. So we're going to go action, start another flow. And the flow that we're going to start will be the send contact info to KWA. Okay. And that is a simple flow. We're going to have one more step we're going to add here at the end. Here's the gift that I promised. Now you want to send people after you've gotten their information and you've populated into your CRM database. You're going to say, well, I promised them something. So let me continue. I'm going to give them some feedback, text feedback that says, you know, here's your gift. You could say, uh, check out my website, whatever you want to do. Um, and then allow them, if you say, for example, let's say, uh, get your gift by clicking below, right? Whatever. So you type in a little text, add a button, and we're click on the button to change the label of it. We're going to say, uh, get my gift, get my gift. And then save. Oh, and what I didn't do, so we'll go back and edit, is I changed the label, but I got to tell them, what are we going to do? We're going to probably send them to a website generally. <clears throat> if you select a conversation from the KWA builder from the drop down menu, uh, there is an option to put in a destination uh, and that by default, I will show you here. If you put the little type, the little curly left bracket, or if you hit this little slash bar in the bottom right corner, it will pop up a list of uh, custom field names like the um, URL destination that we pass in from the accordion builder that you want to send them to. So you, you can either use a variable that you have populated or you can just type in an HTTP address, for example. So let me cut this out. You can type in directly HTTP colon slash slash uh, my awesome website, right? Dot com. Whatever your domain is or whatever your affiliate page is and so forth, you can type it in. Uh, directly into the button, and they will be redirected to your website at the end of the conversation. Okay, so now you have a full conversation. What I did add was a couple of additional cards, tags, information that you know about this person. Like, oh, he said yes, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, instead of going directly to this can I get your email address, First of all, we're going to tag this person. Let's see, hover over an existing line and the trash can will show up. You can delete that line so that we can say we want to insert another step first. <clears throat> and that will be add content. We're going to create an action and mark this person with a piece of information we call a tag. And the tag, for example, will say, um, I have some said, said yes, right? So we have a tag, said yes, exclamation point. So we, we can tag them. And now I'll show you how that works and what, where it goes, but then we're gonna continue from that card to where we were. So that's how you insert a message in between a couple of previous steps. You just delete the previous connection, create a new card, and then make sure you connect to continue to where you left off. Also, the, uh, the other branch here, I'm going to continue. Okay, the first click, close the editor window. We're going to click again on this continue button and create a new action, which is add a tag. Action, add a tag. And this tag will say no. Now, there is no said no. Right? So I'm going to say, oh, I haven't created that tag yet. So I'm going to go over 
here to tags and they're basically on your flow tab, there is an item over here called tags. So instead of looking at flows, if you click on tags, you'll get a list of tags that you have created. You can add a new tag. Your tag name, let's see, said no. All right, so now we have a tag that says said no. So we continue. We now have this new tag said no, okay? Now, when you go in here to look for it, it is not updated yet because this page was loaded prior to your uh, having that tag, so it still doesn't exist. If you simply refresh this page, it will reload the new tags. And everything that we do is saved step by step, so you won't lose anything by refreshing the page. Did zoom me out, so I'll zoom back in here. Wrong direction. Okay, so now we're at a tag. We're going to go back in here and see if the said no tag exists now. And said, so you can filter by typing. And now there's a said no, right? So when you want a new tag, you just jump over to create a new tag, add the tag, come back to your conversation, refresh the page, then you can add the tag. All right, once we have added the tag, we're going to cl close the editor and continue the conversation. Okay. So now on a high level, you greet the person, give them some visual feedback, tag them about you know, some information you want to know about them, and then continue the conversation, get their email, get their phone, send that information to KWA, and then say, here's your, here's your gift add a response and a button and, and redirect the button. Now, there are some additional pieces of information that you can track inside of the uh, KWA contact manager, right? So one hey, more Scott, can, you pause, yeah. can, you, can you pause before you go any further? Yeah, go okay, ahead. Great. Me. So I yeah, I wanted to open it up for questions and or what do what do people see that you know how could you use some of the things how could this benefit you as a marketer from what Scott just shared like tagging as an example um, and I can't see anybody's face so is there I think it I I think it is good for the tagging because. Um, you the when you add the tag said yes you know that the, what the conversation is it's valuable to you the marketer because now you know what to follow up with them um but i uh, i guess my question would be are we only able to put in these little giphy kind of things or can we put in an actual like two minute little video before we put the conversation or does you it can put pictures and you can put the gifs um you can okay, put a so link no to videos. a video you put a okay. link to it right okay um and and scott do you want to clarify about the europeans with gifs and videos and all of that Without yeah and that may be changing so oh, face right. facebook has um temporarily disabled the ability to put GIFs in a conversation for individuals who are uh, subject to the EU rules. Don't know why a GIF is a problem, but if you have customers who are interacting with your bot and they are in the EU or subject to EU rules, uh, if you don't have a contingency fallback for a text only response and you only have the, let me see, if you only have the, uh, the GIF, then basically the conversation will freeze for them. So I will show you how to put in a contingency for that. Um, but basically that is applicable to anyone who is contacting your bot from an EU uh, area that's subject to the EU laws. Um, some of the things that Facebook had taken away, they have given back. So I'm 
hoping that Facebook's working out something where they can justify, hey, GIFs aren't a problem for you laws and we're gonna provide those again. But right now there is an issue with um, conversations that have the uh, GIFs in them, if they're from the, e in, from the EU. Also, if the, the bot builder, the person who owns the bot dashboard and is creating conversations, it appears because we have some individuals who are in the EU, it looks like if they write the conversations and have guests from the United States, for example, that are not subject to EU rules, because the bot designers in the EU, they also have the same problem. That seems mm -hmm. odd, but it's a two-way street. If the user or the bot designer is in the EU, you have to have the contingency. Okay? Okay. So maybe... Let's go Pull up my so, yeah before you yep. before you go into details of how to do that yeah i wanted to just see if there's any other questions <laughs> and or the value that people might see from tagging things like tagging okay because I, I have a quick question um I, sure. I haven't been able to jump into this that much so i'm, I'm just starting now so if i'm at the um the dashboard that starts with analytics how did it get into the flow from there is it from like the, flow the flows button? yeah there's yeah. a flows word in the left column it says flows yeah so, so and then what's up. what's the next then it says new folder is that what you do next or is new it flow. yes yeah so new new flow all right so here's add, what we add flow with. oh add, add flow okay add flow yeah you click on this add flow and then you just name it and then and then you can start doing it correct yep. continue and then it takes you right into the flow that we're building into your new flow. Okay. Okay. And there's that start other and flow. And flow start. Question. Okay. And, and let me just clarify. Flow is just another word for what we're calling conversations. Okay. okay. Or, or a script. But so they're all synonymous. Okay. So the technical term in the bot admin area is flow, but we refer to that as a conversation. Okay. So if someone else had a question, go ahead, Scott. I was going to um, explain why we refer to them as flows versus conversations, even though they're, they essentially appear to, this, to the visitor as the same thing. And that is because at the end of this flow that I'm creating, right, I'm saying go to another flow. So I'm, um, or I can, I can say, go, I want to send you to another flow like this one, send a flow. The flow is in the conversation, you could send them to another flow that interacts with the user in another way. It says, um, hey, while I've got you here, um, do you mind if I ask you some more questions, right? And that's that can be in a separate flow altogether. But when the two flows are connected, it's one conversation, even though it's two flows. So we call them flows because they're segments, they're parts of a conversation. But when you're on the other side and viewing it, a flow and a conversation will appear to be the same because you don't see the separation. The user won't see the separation. Okay. It's a flow on the back end and it's a conversation when it's, when it's uh, initiated. Right. Okay. And then, and one thing I'd like to put in front of all that is what's extremely valuable about what we're doing is 99% of the people are never going to do this. They're going to get the right. benefit of doing this. Like, one of the things that Scott mentioned there, which maybe you didn't catch or not, is you can have this flow going, but in order to get the contact information that it's capturing from the prospect into our Kingdom Wealth Alliance admin area, into our contact management system, and we'll do the same thing for the free bot system. It's what Scott is highlighting there is he's created a flow called send contact info to KWA. And we'll have one for the free bot system as well. So when people are using the free bot system and they're just pointing and clicking and to, to use a done for you web page with a done for you conversation, it includes behind the scenes, all of what we're looking at now. So they'll never need to know this. They'll never need to see it. They just get all the benefits from it. It's kind of like, Maybe an analogy for me is because I'm not big on cars or knowing how, because I didn't grow up that way, but I 
can take, you know, my car key and open up the door, put it in the, you know, the ignition and start the car and drive it. But I don't know all everything that's under the hood and how it works. I don't need to know. I just need to know how to open up the door, put the key in the ignition and drive. So that's the very valuable thing that we're providing, uh, you know, that 99% of the people that are going to benefit from using this will never need to know. You guys, though, have the privilege of when you got lifetime, you didn't have to, you, you'll never have to pay on how many contacts you have. And you also get the benefit of being able to get into the dashboard like Scott's showing you. So if you want to create conversations, you can go from there. And so my prior questions, I'll throw that back out there from a marketing standpoint, who sees some applications by being able to ask a prospect a question or multiple questions and quote, tag them, then what, so John, go ahead. What might you do with that? <clears throat> Yeah, tagging is absolutely huge because you can use that. It doesn't have to be just said yes. It can be said yes from my template flow, um, and you can name that template flow. You know, you you have um, so many options and so many things that you can do with a tag that um, allows you to really keep track of what that prospect was interested in and and so then you can actually take those people that were interested in that particular um service that you're offering and and create a email campaign specific to those people you know so tags are huge there's a lot of things that uh, tags can do for people absolutely so, so i'll share one because the guy we talked to this morning was has is involved in crypto and so are many of the people on this call. So what if, and then there was a key guy I was talking to last night and he was saying, if we could create a conversation, which we can to help people know how to set up a wallet, you know, how to get started, you know, you know, onboarding people into a new company, maybe they join their company, but they don't know what is step one, what is step two, step three, getting someone to sign an application, let's say for a business or buy something. It's like buying a new gadget, but if you don't have the owner's manual or the get started guide, and you don't know how to use it, then people leave it on the shelf. They don't use it. So you could ask a question as an example, do you have a wallet? Are you using an exchange? Are you using this one or that one or whatever? And based on their answers, you can send them to a whole separate flow that deals with how you can support that person who doesn't know that. So you don't confuse, let's say, I'm just talking off the top of my head. Like if you had a class at school with elementary and middle school and college students, right? You wouldn't want to teach one thing to everybody because then you're going to be above some people's head and you're going to be below other people's. But with the bot, you could ask a question, what's your level of experience? Are you a beginner, an intermediate person, or an advanced person? And based on their answer, now you take them to a whole separate flow that you know will give them what they're looking for. And then tagging them, as Scott was saying, is we're not just going to give them the info, but we want to know what did they answer to this question. So later you can come back and market to that per to the beginner something different than you would market something to the experienced person. Does that make sense? Right. And, yeah, it's and also with, <laughs> with the tags, if you have, like, you know, their education level, for, you were talking about education for, uh, you know, if they're a kindergartner or a primary school or, or, you know, a university student, and you know that up front, then later on the conversation, when you're going to give them a response to some other event or question, you can say, okay, based on their previous, if they're tagged as a beginner, uh, give this answer in kind of a beginner's language. But if they're an advanced person, then you can speak to them in different language altogether and give them, you know, a more detailed response. So you can customize the future conversation 
based on tags. And here's an example. I pulled up a user who interacted with the bot, me, Robo Reply, right? <laughs> and I was going through a flow and I tagged it. And here's where the tags show up at the very top of the user information page that you get to over here in your bot dashboard. There's a user section. You, you click on users, it shows you everyone who has interacted with your bot. You click on a username and it shows you their tags. So you can say, oh, like for example, let's say that you was a real estate bot because I see real estate action here. They clicked no on, on my conversation. You can tag them as a buyer or a seller or buyer or both. You can tag them with buyer tag and seller tag if they say they're both, right? So then when you're going through a conversation and you want to offer them something, you can say, well, if they're a buyer and they don't have the seller tag because they're not both, then you're not going to talk to them about items that would be of interest to a seller. They're a buyer. So you're going to talk to them. You're going to route them down the conversation based on the tag, whether they tag themselves as a buyer or a seller, right? You're going to have a conversation for both, converse, you know, if for buyers and for sellers. And if they say, hey, I'm both a buyer and a seller, I'm going to sell my house and buy a new one, then, then you can tag them with buyer and with seller, send them down through the buyer's flow that says, um, you know, what are they looking for? And at the end, when you've gathered all the information from that visitor, you can say, oh, I see. Not only do we have your information now that, that, that we need to help you to find what you're looking for as a buyer, but now let's talk about the house that you're selling. Now, you would skip that all together if they're not also tagged as a seller. But you can check the conversation and go, if they're a seller, then let's ask them the seller's questions. Right? So tagging is a good way to control how the conversation continues after some point. Well, I see it too that, that um, Kimmy, I'm here with her today at her shop okay. and they have both the, all their ministry and they have the, um, the person who has a ministry down in, in Costa Rica and they have their business, but their business has multiple different things. They have um, a health supplement kind of thing, but then they have their coffee shop. They okay could literally like what you just said they could talk to somebody about donating based on based on what their interest is but then they could turn around and say come back because they've said they were interested in something else and they could say would you like to become a regular donor and that would also help with those other things you said you were interested in Instead of just like a one-time donor, you could then pull them in to becoming a, a team partner with you. Um, and, and they could even, they could like, um, the, the, it's so cool because if they said, yes, they like coffee, but yes, they care about these kids. You can say buying our coffee on a regular basis from us lets you support our kids. So there's so many things your tag does. It's awesome. Anyone have any questions about the user tags or the user profile information that we collect? This is so, show some of the information that we get from Facebook when they interact with us. We get their name, we get their gender, we get their language, we know what time zone they're in. We, uh, we know when they first interact with the bot. That's automatically opting them in when they interact with the bot. Uh, last time they were through the conversation and interacted with the bot, uh, did they opt in? direct through a conversation or, you know, was there a referral, uh, a reference keyword? When you create an opt-in from the KWA uh, page. Uh, accordion landing page builder, there's a section to say, we want to use a bot. Uh, oh, I want to use my own external you know, conversation. And you put in your, your step ID from your own conversation. Then um, you will see how it's, it's opted in through a keyword. Let's see. This gives the user's uh, ID. So if you, this is a, a privacy thing that Facebook um, implements that says every user that comes into your bot gets a unique user ID um, because they might in, they might interact with your bot as a guest and you don't have their name then, but you do have a user ID. So if they come back you can say, oh, this user ID has interacted with me before, so I can, I can, you know, 
interact with them differently. Welcome back versus, you know, welcome to my page. Um, you, if they give you the email address, we have that and the phone, we have that. I have not actually, I need to, I need to show you this right now because I didn't put this in the flow. When they give you an email address, you need to tag them as opted in. If you don't also tag them as opted in, you cannot send them an email from the system and the same for SMS, get that. When they give you the phone number, hey, also some people don't get our email, so uh, can I get your phone number so I could, as a backup plan, send you SMS? If they gave you the phone number, but you didn't tag them that they gave you the permission, then the system won't allow you to, to send out SMS. So um, just having the information is great. Let me take you back here and I'll show you when they give you an uh, email address or a phone, you also, let me show you, add uh, action. It's under the actions. Let me shrink down my video screen. Okay. Add a content, action, email, set email opt in. So you have to set that they have opted in. And then we're going to take this example and delete this card it says they gave us the email that means they've opted in to receive emails then we're going to continue to ask for the phone right so that that tag in the user profile right here i didn't tag this test running through it I didn't tag it as opted in to email. Even though I have the email address, they didn't opt in to get the email. So that is an internal thing because at some point they could say, yeah, I don't want to get an email. And then you've removed the tag that they've opted in, but you still have their email address. So rather than deleting their email address, you just say they've, they've opted to not get emails. So in the future, you can follow up with them in an, another conversation say, Hey, I have your email address. Would it be okay if I sent you an email? And otherwise, I, you won't send them an email, but you have to tag them as opted in or not opted in, right? Um, and the same thing with phone. If they gave you the phone number, we're going to add a, let's see, delete this, add a tag that says that they gave us permission to say send them an SMS. So we're add a content. Action, SMS, send uh, send an opt-in, set opt-in. So you can opt-in or opt-out. They If they say opt-out, we'll just remove the permission to, opt to send them. So now when they go through, they give you the email address, the email opt-in tag gets set. It's kind of a special tag. And the set SMS opt-in as well. So then when you come over to the users and you look at individual users, you'll have the email address and the fact that they said, yes, you can email it. And they'll have their phone number and an opt-in that says, yes, you can send me a, an SMS text message. If in a few future message, they come back and say, you know, I don't want to get these information for, from you anymore. You remove the yes opt-in and they, they become no, they're not opted in anymore. You still have the information. For your records. Quick, quick question. Is that an auto thing that happens that it, or do we have to individually go in every time somebody unsubscribes? Um, when, well, when they, there will be a flow, an unsubscribe flow, and the unsubscribe flow will automatically take off the opt in. But you have to put on the opt in uh, unsubscribe flow permission. You have to set the permission to to be opted in so but she was asking but you can manage stuff she was asking sorry, about Michael. opting out you said you said it but it sounds like there's a flow to automate if someone says that ah, i don't want i don't want to receive any email from you anymore or i don't want to receive an sms from you anymore right so right so there are built-in flows for unsubscribing from your bot and for unsubscribing from sms messages so if they say stop, um, that's one of the keywords to, to unsubscribe. And the unsubscribe flow will say, um, you know, if they say stop, you can, you can send them one more message that says, 
um, do you wish to unsubscribe? And if they then say yes, then you take them off. Okay, so you can ask them for a confirmation to unsubscribe in case they accidentally typed uh, stop something. But no, no, I didn't want to stop the flow. I wanted to know how to stop something else. You know, they're asking you a question. So you don't want to accidentally unsubscribe them. Yes, John. Yeah, just to clarify for, for those that may not fully understand, all of what you're showing right now is just Facebook. So we collect all their data right. and put it into KWA if they're a KWA user as well. So this just applies right. to Facebook only and we're actually collecting that information prior to actually sending it to KWA. Yes, all of this information is populated by Facebook and then in the flow, see, we've got the information here and here and here. And then when you tell the flow to send the information to KWA, then it goes into your contact manager where you can uh, use the email campaigns you've designed inside of KWA and so forth on the landing pages, redirect people into the landing pages. And one, so, thing's, yes. one thing that uh, you didn't show in here yet, Scott, is where it's actually going to because we don't we haven't sent it to a particular kwa's um id right. number yes so um am i muted no i'm unmuted okay so that's because uh michael inserted a some questions he wanted to see if there are any questions we haven't gotten to that step yet. so now i'm going to show you how to do what what john is referring to we are saying send data to kwa but that's just We've collected a bunch of variables and we're saying, hey, KWA, I have some data. But the data we haven't set is who am I? Who, who is sending this data to KWA? So what I did is I copied this previously so we could just explain it versus recreate it. I'm going to set some custom field values. Can you zoom in? So, can I look, zoom in. I can't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, certainly. So previously we said, you know, we asked the question and, and it was yes or no, right? That's all we did. But in order to tell KWA who gets this data we're collecting, we need to tell the bot who we are. So we're going to set some custom fields and I'll show you how we do that. I'm going to actually move this over a little bit, click on here where the menu will pop up. We're going to add content. The add, add the content, we're going to do an action and set a custom field. Okay, so we select set a custom field and then the click on this set a custom field but that, that was inserted and it says what custom field do you want to set? Well, I want to set a variable that we have in there called the referrers uh, referrer CID. This is the KWA's customer identification number that is referring this data into the into the CRM. So you set this custom field as your KWA number. So in this example, I have uh, 980600, for example. This is a value that would be the value you set for your account number, right? So now, that variable is set. However, there's one caveat you must remember when you put the set variable on the entry point of your conversation, they get the message and they leave the message and this is never executed. So you actually need to come over here to the right hand side of this variable, grab this up down arrow and slide it up until this box highlights and drop it on top and it will move it above that, that uh, previous box. So now, as they enter into this conversation, your referrer ID is set, and then it asks, would you like to know, and sure, so forth. So basically this initial step allows you to set some additional data that you're going to send to KWA. We have some additional fields that you can set, a URL destination and URL origination. Those are what we use inside of the accordion builder so that when you are building a landing page, we'll tell you what landing page they came from. And if you have a button at the end of the conversation, uh, you can 
set the value here to my uh, to your destination. And if you set these variables up front rather than putting them in the button at the end, let me show you what we did here. We put in the get my gift an actual destination, right? But instead, if you take this destination and you say, I'm going to put in the variable called the URL destination. And then up front, we're going to set the URL for the variable, uh, the destination that we put into the button. So we open this. The URL destination, when you set the URL destination to whatever destination you want to put in there, my free gift or my awesome website, right? And then save that up front. When you maybe just uh, redirect, say this is the message that enters now that we put the other data in it. We're going to say they answered, yes, I would. And no, I wouldn't. And we're going to just get rid of this card. Boop. All right, so this is the new modified card. We set some values. They said, if they say yes, they go through the conversation. If they say no, they go through the conversation. We have set a URL origination, a URL destination. We set a ID that we're going to put the contact information into. And there's another field that I'm waiting for the developer to uh, enter we'll probably call this notes or something but you can actually as well enter other information right now the field is text three just a generic name but you can set the text to any notes you want to like this person came from my wednesday webinar thursday you know taco tuesday event or whatever put some notes that are related to your flow and those notes will also be put into your KWA contact manager any day now, as soon as I get that implemented. <laughs> so the other fields are already working, the URL destination, URL origination, and the required field of your refers CID so that we can uh, know which, which account to put your uh, contact into. Now, as I was saying, if you put this up front and use the variable at the end instead of hard coding it at the button. When you send the data to KWA, it will actually show, hey, this person is uh, has come from this address and was sent to that offer. And if you don't populate it in the variable, there will be nothing to put to KWA. Even though they go to the destination that you want them to go to, you won't know in KWA where you sent them because you didn't populate the variable. Does that make sense? You don't have any questions about that? It will be captured in Facebook, but it won't be sent to KWA Correct. without that. Yep. Right. So if you look at the variables inside of your bot dashboard, you will have any variables that you populate it will show up here. But if you didn't um, send it to KWA, you won't see the same thing in the um, KWA contact manager. So any variables you set, whether or not they're set to, uh, whether or not they are recorded in to your contact manager, KWA, all of your custom fields will be in the user record inside your bot as well. So we'll be adding more information, more, we need to find out what's valuable to have in KWA before we just flood your contact manager with all of these variables and such. So we're going to try to have a few fields where you can send information in when it's important. Otherwise, you just check your bot dashboard for all the other information. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? We can, we can, uh, oh, I was going to, I'll come back to the uh, condition for the EU. John, before you go, other? yeah, before you go there, um, one thing you might want to show is on the buttons themselves, how they actually do the um, emoticons um, so they can see the, um, when they, yeah. So if you want to label something like get my gift, um, you can 
click on this little smiley face and you can actually put in an emoticon. Let's see when it pops up here and you can search a gift. There you go, get my gift. So you can put cute little emoticons inside of the buttons. And believe it or not, those little emoticons right there, um, from statistics that I've read, make a huge difference in bots. Yeah. Just the little emoticons in there um, have a two to three times uh, uh, return of, of the people that actually click on them. Thank so, you. yeah, that that's very and and that's true. And subject lines of emails, uh, posts on Facebook, right. et cetera. Yep. So that's a very key point. Thank you, John. You bet. So I'm going to delete this initial going directly to the um, directly to the, the animated GIF and show you here's if you're dealing with either customers or uh, clients who are in the EU, you go to this blue plus sign down here and you add a condition card. The condition, I'm gonna drag this over into the empty area and zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> this condition says, and, and we'll actually do two. Like we'll say, if they say yes, we're gonna come up and do this condition. And the condition says, right, go to the editor, here you go. All the condition, we wanna add a condition. The condition is we have a built-in condition that the subject to EU rules is yes. If yes, they're subject to EU rules, that's the condition, then we wanna do something special. We wanna say, choose next step, uh, we wanna, start another here i'm going to actually do it from you can let me uh, just actually here create a a new step which uh, come on let me zoom out i i said if yes then jump up here that's not what i wanted to do <laughs> okay if yes they are subject to eu rules then what we're going to do is we will just create a non-animated gif for example it says text um, or image or an image right you can do an image we they images are, are acceptable so connie had asked about connie had asked about are there other things you can do rather than gif so let's do a let's do an image so we can say if they are subject to eu rules then we will create a new card that says add content image and then the image, you can either upload an image from your computer uh, or insert a URL from the, the web. So let's see, let's, let's go to Google Images just to pull up an image. There's, if you're not familiar with this images.google.com, you can get a lot of images. In a conversation, it's probably not very uh, much of a concern because no one who's not in the conversation uh, will see the images. On a website, you shouldn't use people's, uh, you know, private uh, graphics that you find necessarily in Google. But like this check mark, you can go, oh, or yes, yes, right? So you pick a, like this one says licensable. You wouldn't use this on a website. You probably wouldn't have a problem with it inside of a conversation because nobody sees it except the individual. But let's grab this one. I like this. Great speech, right? So we just copy this link address we go back over to our conversation and if they said yes and they're subject to EU rules then we're going to give them a picture and the URL there we go come on paste let's see if that actually works you may have to open it uh, I think we had to open it it's like a to, Google results page I have to publish maybe no, you have to actually go into it because this is actually a search result. It's not an actual destination to the picture. So we're just going to go in here and copy the image address. 
right? Gotcha. So now we are going to change this because see, this is a Google search result. Yeah. We're going to paste paste the image URL from that website, and yes. now you see the picture. And it does get uploaded into the the bot dashboard, so you only need to put in the URL once. You no. Know. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say. If they are subject to e rules, let me make a little space down here. Then they get a picture, and then after the picture, they go directly to the ad tag, right? But if they're not subject to EU rules, then we're going to give them the animated GIF, and then we're going to add the tag, right? So now you can do the same thing for no. I'm going to show you how to quickly du duplicate a card. Click the little duplicate up here and you get another condition card. And we're going to do the same thing for no. We're going to click on the button and say if they're subject to EU rules is yes again. And that's why I duplicated, duplicated it so I didn't have to go through and set the condition. If it's yes, then we're going to give them a, an image. Add content. Add an image. I'm going to go over here to Google and say no. Find a, an image of something that says no. And it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say no. Just to, and then open the website so we can see the picture. There we go. Copy. Oh, I like this one better. Copy the image address. And go back to your conversation flow. Insert the URL and paste. <laughs> you hear my dog dreaming. <laughs> and then it says no. Okay. So if they're subject to EU rules and they said no, then we give them the graphic that says no. And then we're going to go directly to the tag that says they said no. But if they are not subject to EU rules, right? We're going to give them the animated GIF and then tag them that they said no. So that's that's basically how you deal with animated GIFs if you are concerned uh, that your customers are from the EU. So does that make sense? So we've got set some variable data. And if you're giving animated GIFs, uh, you might might want to put in an option for a still image rather than an animated GIF if you are um, dealing with customers who might be subject to the EU rules. Okay. Let me uh, stop sharing for a moment and see if there are any questions. So I just have a couple of questions. Um, so if I was to build a flow and I hit publish now, would the chat bot show up on my Facebook page? Uh, well, you have to put <laughs> not yet. chat bot on your Facebook <laughs> page. I mean, yes. So the Facebook business page. It's attached to chat, that. Yes. The chat bot is hosted on your Facebook fan page, your business page. So if you publish, then yes, if they go to your Facebook page, it would show up. My business, my business page. Right? Your business page that has the logo of your uh, yeah. If so you have all the parameters set up properly inside your Facebook page, you got to go into the settings and and set but, the bot for the default bot and all that stuff. I think I did that, you know, previously when we first got the bots. I yes. think, but I'll have to go back and check. Okay. Right. So yes, as soon as you publish, we're basically telling Facebook. Um, if you've gone through the setup step, so on your KWA dashboard, there's set up your bot and there's, you know, go to your bot dashboard. When yeah. you go through the setup of the bot, it connects the bot dashboard to your Facebook page and it tells Facebook, hey, I'm going to control Facebook Messenger messages on the Facebook page. You know, stand down. If you okay. haven't gone through that setup, then you may get your standard Facebook default, you know, four questions what are your what are your opening hours and there's someone there i can talk to kind of worthless questions that they put in as a default 
So okay. you you want to say, hey, I have a bot of my own. I want to tell Facebook to stand down and let my bot control the interactions on my Facebook page. Okay. And the other question I had is, are you going to make any like pre-made flows that we can kind of just change the content? Absolutely. That's what we're working on. We have all of the pre-made flows that are in the accordion builder. We're going to provide those to you. Um, and that should be available probably in, a, in the next 24 hours or so. We've got the developer finally to figure out how to push those from our own built-in house account to your own personal bot account that you purchased. So now when you select something from a dropdown, it will copy that entire flow, push it to your account, and then you can go in and look at the flow and change it in any way you want. So you're not actually using the house flow anymore. You are getting a copy of it so you can modify it if you wish. Yes, yeah, Scott. Yeah. Can I can I share a screen and show that? Oh uh, yeah. Well I'll show a little something. Okay. And then certainly oh, I have a question. The recording building different from the club. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, I'll answer that too. So I'm going to share my screen. So share screen two. And what I'm going to show you is someone else's um, admin here. This is not mine. Okay. So this one is for someone that does not have their Facebook page set up. So this is what we call the accordion builder. When you come to create a web page and we have a step in there called automated messenger chat, here's something new we just did today. Previously, we were allowing you to select from the drop down and select you know some of the conversations what we that we pre-written but what we realized is that if you don't have your automated messenger chat set up then we you know we we don't know that that you're up we are have not been able to previously what scott called push the conversation that you wanted to have onto your automated messenger bot admin area, which is needed for the bot to show up on your page. So now we remove that and put this link here. This Good link job. Here, this link here, thanks. This link here to set up the automate, I don't know why we didn't think of this sooner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the link, it's a work in progress, right? But guys, when you see what we have, there's nobody doing what we're doing um, that I'm aware of, okay? This is a game changer stuff. So now this setup automated bot, it's also up here when you put your mouse on automated bot over here to set up, okay? So once you've set it up though, then we know your, fa your Facebook page ID. So there's two things needed, not to get technical, but we need to know your Facebook page ID, um, actually three, that, so that's one. And then, so when you set it up, either from over here or if you, to have skipped that and you come over here and you're trying to use it. Well, now we're blocking you until you actually go set it up. Once we have your Facebook page ID, then you'll see from the drop down the list of convert, what we call conversations. So if you want to pick one to use, then we'll automatically know what domain you're trying to use it with for the page and what conversation you're trying to use and behind the scenes, we're pushing that conversation. Let's say you pick the conversation, copy pro traders. We're pushing that conversation as if that conversation is in your bot admin area, even though previously it has not been. Okay. So we're automatically putting that conversation in your bot admin area. We're automatically whitelisting your domain for you. So we're doing set, we're automating several very important things that are necessary for your bot to show up on your page. Okay. Is that is so that's awesome. Yeah, isn't it? So so this is brand new as of today. So if you see this here, just click on it, walk it through. It's a couple minutes. It's a conversation that Scott created. And then once you've only need to do it once. Kind of like that set it and forget it. But then once that's done, then you'll have from the drop down, you'll have the com those of you that are using Kingdom Wealth Alliance, you'll have the conversations that we've created. Now with the free bot system, they don't need to do that because with the free bot system, they don't get to pick their own domain. They're using pages that we've created with a domain that we're sharing. And yeah, just to keep it simple, you know, they'll just come and point and click and say, yeah, show me 
Uh, I'm going to pick what company I'm in, and then they're going to type in what this was one of the variables Scott was talking about earlier, the destination URL. Where do you want people to go? And that would be your affiliate link. If you're promoting, let's say, Copy Pro Traders or ABC or XYZ, you know, put in your affiliate link. Okay. So this, uh, this will eliminate a lot of the confusion. Some people have said, hey, I, I paid for the lifetime bot and I tried to put it on my page. Why isn't it showing up? Okay. And the very last minor piece is, um, well, something that, that we'll have finalized tomorrow. So every single person, if you've ever set up this bot before, you know, or if you haven't and you do set it up, now you should have no problem coming to our accordion builder when you go to you know create a page um, and be able to come down to our automated messenger chat step and then select one of our conversations. Now, one of the questions of Michael that you were saying was like, hey, I'm going to bring this over here. My um, Facebook. Let's bring this over here. OK, so here's my automated messenger chat admin. OK, and so let's say this is one of my conversations. And if you want to use one of your conversations, Michael, you'll be able to just click on this little there's something Scott didn't show, but because he had additional cards. But when you have a whole flow like this, there's one card that's going to have this little start card on it. OK, and that's important because when you put your mouse on it, you'll see there's some other things, one of which is the published link that you can use to share anywhere on social media, in an email, whatever. Or this little symbol right here, which looks like a finger fingerprint, you click on get step ID. You'll see a little green copied button in the lower left hand corner. And then when you're back on your web page, you would come over here and say, hey, I want to use one of, you know, we say one of your conversations, your Facebook page ID. Once you've done the setup process, that will automatically be in this field here. So you won't have to worry about that. And then you would just paste in that that step ID that I just got over here by putting my mouse on start and putting it here. So this way you can have one a conversation that you create in your bot admin and say, wow, this is really cool. All right, cool. Now that I've done it, now you've got several choices. You can you can get the link and go share it anywhere. But when you share it anywhere, you know, like you share it on Facebook or in an email or whatever. OK, let's say I get this link and I come over here to Facebook. And I go to my user here. Facebook slow today. Come on. Once it comes up, <laughs> hopefully it'll come up. Then you can, you know, if I wanted to come to my page and just paste it in here, I can do that. And one suggestion I have when you test stuff, make sure you just do it to yourself. You can just click here to change this from, you know, showing it to the world public or just to yourself. Okay. So I've got a default image that comes up with mine. I click it. And now what I've done is I've taken my conversation so my conversation over here had hi my name is john johnson okay and so that's that public by the way what your post is public now i did do it public oh yeah yeah all right i thought i changed it back to only me thank you all right <laughs> so, so you better delete that now no i just changed it back it's all right so um now, now that it's private feeling. just to me right? I can have this link and this image. And when I click on it, it's going to, uh, I clicked on that takes them to my Facebook group. So let me clarify that. Let me go back to my private page and click on the link. When someone clicks on the link, which again, you can send as an email, you could post, you know, I could have posted that without the picture that begins a chat 
in Messenger. Hi, my name is John Johnson. Okay, so that's the conversation over here that I just grabbed from here. Okay, is that clear, Michael? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I have a quick question. I just went in there in my KWA. And so in the beginning, it says to pick your domain, and I have like a chatbot dot with my URL. Is that the one? Is that the domain I want to pick before I go to the next page? You pick the dot, you pick a domain. You have to buy a domain first. Well, you have yeah, I already own, I already own some, but there's, there's several here that have chatbot dot then the domain is that the one i want to use the one that says chatbot in the beginning of it any you can I put it on anyone? any domain you decide yes yeah. anyway, I, don't think, okay. I don't think michael's uh facebook page id is set up with us yet oh it's I mean, not okay it's not so you need to go through that setup step so let me let me come back and share my screen one more time michael i mean i mean i, I do have when i go to my um my uh, dashboard i have the facebook pages on it when what you're looking at the you, automated you, messenger you, chat yeah when you're when you're yeah so when you're creating a page you pick a domain whatever domain or whatever you want whatever domain yeah um, so if I, and then when you do that and you come to this step where you have the automated messenger chat if you don't see that little setup I think I did. I still keep that over there. Yeah, over here. No, yeah, I, I have it on there. I do have it on there. You have what? The setup automated bot. Yeah. Okay, so you have to go through that process. Once you've gone through that process, then you see my site. I don't have that. Okay. So cool. by default, it puts in my Facebook page ID. Oh, right there. Okay. Okay, so it'll automatically do that. You won't have to do that once you do once you go through this setup so the setup's either here or again up here on automated bot over here click to set up you only have okay. to set it up once okay and once you got so when I go to, up, i'm go sorry ahead. on my dashboard though it does show my facebook page so so i should just reset your bot right dashboard now. yeah on my dot dashboard yeah dashboard. Okay. in kwa we need to we need to connect to that okay okay Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So, so what I was sharing is, and this is the powerful thing about owning your own thing. Let's say I click over here. I want to change this from John Johnson. This is how I demo it, by the way. I just keep it really, really simple. I open up one flow. I click on the very first card. Hi, my name's John Johnson. Whatever the name of the prospect is that I'm talking to. So let's say I'm talking to you, Michael. So I type in Michael Moniz, right? So I type in your name, click as Scott said, outside of this card, this is called the card in the upper right, you know, on the right hand side, click outside of it. All right. And then it's saved over there, but well, it's in here, but I still need to publish. So I'm going to click on publish once. Then in the lower left hand corner, I get a green box that says success. Then again, if I want to use this, I come over here, put my mouse on the on the initial card that has that start button, okay? And I put my mouse on it, click on get the step ID. Again, I get a little green copied in the lower left-hand corner. Now I'm gonna come down here and paste it in. Well, I already have it pasted in. Use okay. your other page where your Facebook ID is in there. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Yes, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. So if I'm over here using one of my conversations, what we what we call your conversations, it has my Facebook ID automatically because I've done the setup process. And then this is if I if that wasn't there, I just right click and paste in what I got from over here. OK. From right there. Now what that's going to do is instead of it being over here in Messenger where it previously said, hi, I'm John Johnson, and where I had put the conversation on my Facebook page, okay? Um, and here's this conversation, you know, hi, I'm John Johnson, the previous one, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a page within Kingdom Wealth Alliance, that's huge. So I'm gonna skip all these steps. I'm gonna go to my web page. 
and you're going to see here's my conversation that will come up and you can do all kinds of things with our web pages and and so now it's got chat with Michael Price and it's got my image this is my Facebook page image and this is my Facebook page name so that's how you brand yourself that's why having your own Lifetime bot account is huge for many reasons, one of which is branding yourself. But when I click on continue as Michael, now instead of saying John Johnson, oh, I need to end. Down below. No, you just have to click. Oh, click right there. I thought it was bringing up the previous conversation. So now it says, hi, my name is Michael Moniz, right? So that's because I just changed that over here right here. So that's the power of this. So Scott, correct me if I'm wrong. Once we push a conversation to them, and what I mean by push a conversation is once Michael comes over or anybody comes over here and says, oh, I've, I've set up my bot. Now I want to use the Copy Pro Traders one for the very first time. The very first time the Copy Pro Traders conversation or flow is not in your bot admin area, but once I click save, then our system is gonna push this conversation, Copy Pro Traders, into your bot admin. Is that correct? Correct. correct? correct. Okay, that's what's huge. That's all being done behind the scenes so that you don't have to come over here and create this whole thing yourself. You see how complicated it can be but I do want to simplify it and say, for those of you that are going to learn this, to me, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn it, and we'll have a lot of videos, like we're recording this, and we're going to take snippets from today's training. Um, excuse me. Leave that alone, please. <laughs> my, I thought my kids were knocking my green screen behind me, but it's actually my cat, I think. Scott's got his <laughs> dog going, and I got my cat. Uh, but my point is, you don't have to you don't have to create these, but we will create them and then push them into your admin area. Once they're in your bot admin area, then you can come along and change them. Okay, so that's what's very powerful about all that. Thank you. So I have a quick question. Sure. Um, now you guys will not be an admin on. Um, these people's uh facebook pages no so how can you um how can you do that without being an admin how can you how can you um push those I, let me answer that. That. so oh, I'm not when you that. set up the bot right you go through that set up the bot it says um you're not connected to any facebook page right so right. we are walking the Facebook page owner through the steps that they need to do to connect our bot platform to their Facebook page. So they are the admin of the Facebook page. They connect our bot to them. Now that they've given permission for our, our bot to interact with their Facebook page, now we can push the conversations into their bot account and, and control their Facebook messenger conversations because they initiated it. They connected Perfect. us. And what and whitelist them. So pre that, yeah, that was that was what I was wondering about the whitelisting. Right. How would you do that? If we're you didn't have we're doing rates? that. We're doing that also, right? So correct me if I'm yes. wrong. So we are able that, to whitelist in their Facebook page because that app controller permission that they give us, one of the permissions is to whitelist domains on their behalf. Super. That's awesome. So, so without without so John, you get this, but for people that may not get this. Without us doing all this, everyone would have to create their own conversations. They'd have to come to their Facebook pages, clicking on this flag is where I do it. And then even though we have a short little video on this, and then I have to come over to this. You're not sharing page. your page, Michael. Oh, yeah, all right. Let me go back. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, just look over here. So what I'm saying is not only would you have to come in here and create all this yourself, number one. Number two, even though we have a video on this, which for a lot of people, they're like, oh, my God, I don't want to do any of that. You'd have to come over here to this flag, click on pages, 
find your Facebook page. So the one I was showing you was Michael Price dash Priceless Possibilities. Click on that. Have to come down on the left hand side to settings. Click on that. Come over here to advanced messaging. Click on that. Then you need to come over here to whitelisted domains and whitelist your domain. And there's a certain way to do that too. Even though we tell you in the video, maybe you guys notice there's no www. Well, I don't know when that one is in the box. <laughs> there should be no www. I can delete that one. Yeah. Can I delete that, Scott? Or yeah. I, yeah. Because you have buriedthebot.com on the lower, you have it twice, actually. So you can okay. one of those. All right. So, yeah, when you make a change in here, it's going to tell you, orange, you haven't saved it, so save it again. All right? So my point actually, is there's a lot of things that we're doing for you that we're automating so you don't have to. So let me show one last screen over I here. I noticed something on there, Michael, that you may want to be able to clean up, and that is you've got custom – burythebot.com, biz.burythebot.com. You got all those in there. All you really need to have is just that one, burythebot.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No subdomains. That's, I think the reason Michael knows that now is because I keep telling him, you don't have to put the subdomain. <laughs> okay. And I got one for the uh, one they, of the developer, or, uh, developers. Should I delete that too? Scott? Yeah. Because all, right. all subdomains could go away as long as the base domain is there. Okay. So now what I want to show you is over here. So you guys have been seeing all the stuff we've been doing with KWA, right? One of the huge things for the pre-launch is of the free bot system is what people are going to get when we go live. Number one, they get it without putting in a credit card. Okay, the, one, the guy that we talked to this morning, one of the things he was excited about is Number one, not only do people get it for free, but people can never pay a penny and still make a fortune sharing the free bot with others. It's not like a lot of other things where you got to be paying money. Now, we do have one of our residual income streams where, yeah, if you're not the $20 a month program that we call the VIP member, and I can go into that a little bit. Um, see you, Bill. Um, then you would lose out. So you... you <laughs> You know, you, you don't want to do that. But for people who are using the free bot system and paying based on the number of contacts. So if someone clicked on upgrade or do I, do I have the right page? Yeah, I think so. If I click on upgrade, they're getting it for free up to 100 contacts. Once they go over 100 contacts, then they start paying. But back here to the get started page. From the get started page step one is choose an existing chat conversation this is going to be how simple it is they they click on step one come over here to a page where they'll see existing conversations select the company that they're promoting type in their affiliate link and click update so three clicks one click you know click select the company they're promoting two type in or paste in their affiliate link and three update it and that will update this link here all right so they can either click on that link copy that link click on the web page and then they will have a done for you professional web page that we create for their company and a custom conversation so they can have it in seconds okay for free all right. So that's, I hope you, that's amazing. Yeah, that's thank you. We've had people literally yeah. like free, no credit yeah. card. And hey, if I if I just promoted this and I didn't go over 100 contacts, I would never pay a penny. Yep. And some of those 100 people that I share this with, they start paying monthly and, uh, you know, I can earn a lot of money. Yep. OK, so any any other questions? Nope, I would just add to the fact that uh, on the free bot system, they don't have to buy a domain, they don't have to, you know, buy any SSL, they don't have to, you know, go and do any of that stuff that people would be spending a couple hundred dollars just to get set up. Um, so that's just absolutely huge. Thank you, John. Yeah. So we're planning on starting the launch Monday, I think at four o'clock right now. 
I hear anything different tomorrow, I'll let you guys know we have <laughs> another training at four o'clock Pacific time. So um, not four o'clock Eastern, I guess it's another three hours. But well, guys, we're, we're super, super huge. Uh, we should have the new video. We expect it tomorrow um, for the top of the support site. So I can actually show you where, where that will go. That's Isn't the first live training uh, at five o'clock, Michael? Yeah, that's what I have on the calendar, actually. So, so it's it won't go live, or it'll actually go live while we're on the live call. No, the it'll go live an hour before is the plan. Oh, okay, okay. Four, four so it's five, four o'clock Pacific time to go live. Five o'clock for the first training. Okay. All right. Okay, awesome. so this, this is the vi video that we're referring to. This is a video we created in the past. Um, and actually, yeah, so we got it. I think it's over there. Anyway, um, we'll have that new video tomorrow. So we should, um, because our, except our designer might be out tomorrow. He's got to take his father to the hospital. But if that happens, then He'll be working on Saturday. So we'll have that video done. So we're super, super excited, guys. And um, we hope you are too. We'd encourage you to take massive action for the next four weeks once we go live, share it with as many people as possible because you're going to have a very unique opportunity. That pre-launch is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I don't know anyone else doing what we're doing. Um, like John just said, you don't have to buy a domain. You don't have to do SSL. You don't have to give us your credit card. You don't have to ever pay a penny. And you'll be able to use custom conversations. Like with some of these crypto uh, opportunities, they're really big because crypto has been doing really well. But the stumbling block for a lot of people is, okay, I want to do it, but I don't know how to set up my wallet or I don't know how to set, get on an exchange and trade. And I don't know how. To, I don't know how. So the bot can automate and teach and answer a lot of that for you and help people who say yes to start using it and start getting value out of it. Okay. So with that, Scott, thank you for a great job. Um, Lord willing, this recording will save and we'll be able mm -hmm. to edit it down and then we'll show you guys tomorrow. So I'll send out another email tomorrow about tomorrow's training. Okay. Okay. So Great job. Call it Very up. good training. Thank you, everybody, Thanks, for showing up. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Good night. Bye.